friends, welcome back to Food Prep Guide. Today's video is inspired by some chat that I'm seeing on Facebook and preservation canning groups and all that that is concerning to me. Um, I have a soft spot in my heart for brand new canners because I was a brand new canner at one point and I had so many questions and so many frustrations in trying to find truthful answers with social media and viral TikTok videos and Facebook reels and YouTube videos. Um, it can be, there's just a lot of voices talking to us and a lot of them contradict each other. And when it comes to canning, I knew enough to know that there was a safety line somewhere that I didn't need to cross, but where was that safety line and what did I need to do to avoid crossing it? The answer to that was harder to find. So when I see uh, potentially unsafe advice being given on a large scale across multiple social media groups um, I get a little nervous and I almost didn't film this video because um, this is a hot topic and people on both sides of the aisle on canning aisle uh, are very passionate about it their viewpoint of it and I guess I'm just prepared for some maybe not the sweetest comments in the world but that's okay everybody is you know has their own opinion and I just since I had that soft spot for new canners, I just really want to share my opinion um, on this hot topic that's been going around that could potentially uh, make someone sick. So what is that hot topic? Here's the situation that I am seeing in a lot of forums, Facebook groups, and that kind of thing. And that is someone will post a video of their canned good and they'll say okay I did this 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 and this is this safe to eat or you know they'll post their picture and they said I did everything by the book but then this happened right after I pulled it out of the canner is it still safe to eat and the vast majority of answers are something like this if it seals it's fine you're good to go <sighs> um <laughs> Oh, sometimes I just want to reach through the screen. I'm like, no, don't listen to them. So if we follow that line of belief that if it seals, it's fine. If we follow that line of belief, here's one thing that can happen. Someone who's brand new to canning, who maybe don't even know the difference between when they need to water bath can and when they need to pressure can, or they don't know how long they need to water bath can something, or they don't know how long they need to pressure can something, and, and they're just kind of pulling bits and pieces and learning through social media. They don't have a grandparent teaching them, or they aren't learning through a class, or they aren't learning through a book. It's all, you know, social media based. So that's kind of where I'm coming from of why I'm addressing this issue, because I'm just seeing it over and over and over again so I know it's not a small splice of the community it's a large group of people who are learning how to can and are getting told this information that I consider misinformation so if we follow the belief that if it can or if it seals you're good to go then I can take this can of carrots pour water over it to one inch headspace put it in a water bath canner boil it water bath can it for 10 minutes and pull it out and this jar is going to seal. If I water bath can a jar of carrots for 10 minutes, it's gonna seal when I pull it out. And I mean, not a false seal, not a fake seal. It's gonna be a legit, strong, full vacuum seal that could last for two years on the shelf. Does that make this water bath can of carrots for 10 minutes, that was processed for 10 minutes, does that make it safe because it has a good solid seal on it? Absolutely not. And that's because of what botulism needs to grow. And I think that's one of the issues is that maybe people don't understand or don't research what botulism needs to grow. Now, before I dig into all of that, I do want to state, I am not someone who believes that botulism is as big and prevalent and common and all that as the powers that be say it is. In fact, I kind of believe the opposite, but it does exist. It is real. It is a possibility to enter your canned foods, so we do need to take safety precautions when we are canning to avoid that. So what factors does botulism need to grow? It needs four factors. One, a no or an oxygen-free environment or almost oxygen-free environment. Number two, it needs a low acid environment. Number three, it needs moderate 
temperatures. And number four, it needs high moisture. When you put all four of those together, you have the breeding grounds for botulism. And if you go through and think about each of those four items, they are all represented in canning. In canning low acid foods, I should say, and that's why we pressure can low acid foods, by the way, is to get that temperature. It's because remember, we need moderate temperatures for botulism to, um, to thrive. So we need to get that temperature so high that it's high enough to kill off that botulism in low acid foods because we have because we introduce an oxygen free environment when we're canning we have and we can't eliminate the moisture factor because canned food is moist um, we can't eliminate the um, what's the other one? Oh goodness oh the low acid uh, factor because we want to can things like carrots and potatoes and green beans and cabbage and you know all of those things and those are low acid so the only thing that we can control and eliminate and take away from botulism is the moderate temperature by pressure canning at a very high temperature for a sustained amount of time to kill off that bacteria so just because you have a good solid seal does not mean that that food is safe unless you reach those temperatures and sustain those temperatures for long enough to kill, kill off bacteria. Um, I'm, not, I, I'm thinking and talking specifically to low acid foods like all of your vegetables and your meats. Another question that I see going on that's kind of linked to that is someone will say, uh, I pulled my, well, I just have carrots in here, so let's just use carrots as an example. I pulled my carrots out of the canner. Um, the button was popped up so it wasn't depressed and my daughter came by or my husband or son or whatever came by and and, and rub the top of the lid and it's sealed shut. And when I push on it, it doesn't pop back up. Is it okay? Is it, is it a good seal? Because when you, when it went, once it depresses, it stays depressed. So there is some sort of vacuum going on there, right? Is it safe to eat? And once again, the vast majority of the comments is, if it seals, it's fine. And that is a perfect example of a false seal. When it comes out of the canner, not sealed it's still bumped up and someone accidentally comes up and bumps the jar or tops the uh, touches the top of the jar or even intentionally like a child who just doesn't know intentionally presses it down um, it, and, and it is that jar then safe to eat well it's not because it didn't it didn't form that f vacuum during the canning process after it came out it was artificially sealed it wasn't a true seal you know what I mean like that's an example of a false seal and if you have introduced any sort of low oxygen or no oxygen environment then you have introduced the possibility of botulism to grow so you have to focus on that temperature factor and to eliminate botulism which is getting it high enough and sustaining it for long enough to kill it off all the way through to the center of the jar. And that's why we can't water bath can carrots for 10 minutes. That's why we can't water bath can green beans for even 30 minutes. You know, it's because it can't get to that high of a temperature and sustain it long enough to kill off botulism. So if you have been in canning groups, I'm, I'm inter I mean, I can't be the only one who I've seen who has seen responses like these. If you have seen those responses in Facebook groups of if it if it seals it's fine um, I would love to hear how you respond even if you don't hold the same opinion as I do um, I would love to hear um, your opinion your experience um, what sort of research that you've done to come to that conclusion and even if you maybe you do agree with me how do you respond to those people with love with tenderness with grace and to one of the things that I have a hard time with is I do not want someone to think that I'm coming across as like, oh no, you shouldn't do that. Or coming across as like judgy, um, like somehow I'm better than them because I don't do this. No, 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 no. I just want people to eat and feed their family safe food. And, and, and I don't want to stay silent just because I'm scared that someone might say something mean to me back, you know, especially with a platform like this on YouTube that we have here at Food Prep Guide. When I'm seeing such a large volume of people saying, if it seals, it's fine, you're good to go. Um, and nobody is coming in and saying, wait a minute, that's not true. And that could make someone sick. Um, 
I can't just let that slide. I want to put my voice out there and show the other side of that equation. So if you've ever experienced that as well, if you have ideas for how you respond, I would love to see them um, because I just want people to know that I just sincerely want brand new canners to learn how to can properly, learn how to can safely, um, and keep our families safe. Okay, y'all, I hope that was helpful and we'll see you next time. Bye.